Hi, this is Matt Donegan from Business Spotlight. I'm here with Will from Fortis Foundations. Will, tell me something about yourself. Morning, my name's Will. Obviously, um, I'm Managing Director at Fortis Foundations, a civil engineering company, been running for four years now. Four years. And it's it's foundations and anything else? Anything else? So you know? it's foundations, piling, and then we've just recently launched uh, two new divisions that are Fortis EV and Fortis Solar. Okay, brilliant. So you're uh, busy guys. What type of um, foundation work do you do? What type of civil engineering projects? Um, so we work on the rail networks, the steel networks, housing, domestic. Um, so we undertake all sorts of civil engineering, piling, groundworks, drainage packages. Um, and then we specialise in piling, whether it be rail piling, restricted access or large scale. Right. Um, so we've undertaken that, yeah, over a number of sectors. So Okay. What, what made you start the business, Will? So I've been working in construction for the last 22 years, um, started as an, a sort of an apprenticeship on weekends at university, working for a civil uh, company doing weekends while I was doing a sports science degree. Um, <laughs> once, I, once I finished that, um, I went into teaching for a while, um, didn't really enjoy that. Um, so my old boss said, look, come work for me. I'll put you back out on the tools and then you can get a degree along the way. So I, I took him up on that offer, started working uh, back on the shovel, I worked my way up through site manager, site foreman, engineer, project engineer, um, all the way through to senior project manager. Yeah. Um, once I had that experience then, I then moved on to a tier one contractor, direct benevolent rail, um, gained a, a different aspect of knowledge and understanding there for the tier ones. And then um, decided that, you know, the grass was greener. Um, and I'm not going to get anywhere by being in busy for working for other people. So then made the decision to start working for myself. And um, and that was it, really. Didn't look back. Wow. Okay. So four years in, how's it four been? Years how's, how's, how's the journey been? <laughs> it's been it's been emotional, um, but it, it's been a good journey. Um, one I wouldn't change for the world. Um, yeah, been some harsh lessons along the way. We've been very close. Uh, to liquidation of things through just through management and sort of cash flow, not understanding how they all run and work. Um, so you learn your lessons very fast having your own business. Um, it's very hard. Again, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So it is a very complicated minefield at the start. Um, but then you, you sort of gain experience and knowledge. I sought mentorship along the way to try and help me guide through that minefield right. um, to make sure I wasn't going to make the same mistakes twice. Yeah. Good, good idea. There's a lot of business knowledge out there, but uh, it's funny enough, a lot of it doesn't reside with the people who run businesses. Um, yeah. Often they come from the tools or or they come, uh, they start as a technician and then they, they want to do it themselves, and, and which is a great thing to do. But yeah, they, they, there needs to be more help out there, I guess. What's So what what makes Fortis stand out in the marketplace? What's your, have you got a USP? Of, what, what, what have you developed that's kind of all about Fortis? So, I mean, when you look at the markets, really, the the areas for, you know, USPs are, are, are few and far between. Many companies are all the same. Obviously, you try and boast that your your work dynamic and your morals and integrity and, your you know, your um, your goals align with, you know, being collaborative, being honest, being respectful, uh, zero harm, etc. And they're, they're all very like for like. Um, it comes down to, you know, the inter your engagement with the clients, um, we like to offer a full one-stop shop, I don't like that term, but a full turnkey solution for our clients. Um, where I've worked for other companies over the years, there's been split departments, so you'd have a civil department and a rail department, um, and then you know when the workload gets quite low in one, they try and cross to the other and try and pick up the workflow and they can't quite make it work. Yeah. So um, I wanted to have a multi-skilled workforce that were able to do both codes in rail and civils. And so all our guys are, are, are multi-trained to undertake all work scopes. Um, and then we like to offer the full package. So most pilots will go in, just do the piling and leave. And a groundworks company will just come in, do the groundworks and leave. So there's multiple contracts for the clients, uh, multiple risk factors and increased exposure for them. So as a client, as a, as a company ourselves, we offer the full package. So we like to go in and undertake the full work. Groundworks package, undertake the piling and specialisms in that. And then with that, we find the clients like to go with it because there's less contracts, there's less risk for them. 
and one point of contract to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you cut down their pain points, don't you? Yes. You cut their pain point, that pain points by cutting down the amount of paperwork and things go wrong in between a transition between different organisations. That's generally where things go wrong. So, so yeah. that, that really helps, right? That matter. Have you got a lot of repeat business from clients? Uh, so we yeah we pride ourselves on our repeat business. We've never lost a client to date. Um, throughout the four years, you know, it, it snowballed with with our client base anyway. But yeah, we've still got every client that we've taken on over the years, and we, we've got a lot of repeat business. Excellent, that's really good news. So, business journey, it's been a steady climb then, by the sounds of it. So yeah, so I mean, we started in year one with just myself and one of my guys that worked with me previously, um, and we went into the domestic market working to developers. Um, and there was, there was two developers there that we worked for for the first year, um, just continued workload, and then slowly built up over time. Uh, luckily for myself, um, the first company I worked for, um, I was there sort of 15 years and built up a team um, of all ex rugby players and friends. Um, <laughs> so we, we had a good workforce, um, a good laugh, and we built that together. And then when I moved on from that um, to my next venture, I slowly brought that team across with me there. Um, and then when I came back to work for myself, I slowly brought the guys back one by one as we grew and got bigger. So the team I've had, I've had over 22 years. Um, so we know each other inside and out. We know our weaknesses. We know our strengths. And as a team, we, we really do deliver effectively. Fantastic. Do you, do you bring some of that rugby ethos into the business then? 100%. Um, when, when you look at the rugby ethos, it's about teamwork, it's about collaboration, it's about sharing the load, it's about picking each other up when you're down, um, knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses and, you know, using those to your advantage. So, you know, when you're out in the cold and the wet and trying to dig a hole, you know, no one's going to stand up more for you than your teammates that yeah. know what it's like when the chips are down. If you don't dig in and get things done, it's not going to go your way. Um, so everyone chips in, works together. And then enjoys, you know, enjoy the reward when we finish. Yeah, perfect, perfect. I mean, I think personally, I mean, I love the love the sport of rugby, um, and for me, the the integrity, the harmony around a rugby team, it's you know, it's like an unbreakable bond. It's a lifetime bonds can be made through that. So, by bringing that into a business, that gives it a really strong culture to begin to begin with. So the journey's been pretty steady, been steady increases. What does the future look like at the moment? So yeah, so I mean we've we've doubled we doubled in size over years two and three, um, and then we've now um, we're still growing um, a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I want it to be um, organic growth. I'm not looking to expand. It's, it's been very natural to date, um, but now we're in a position where we can start targeting markets. Uh, we've got a business development team that's just started. Um, and we're now looking to attack areas where we where we've been strong. We, we've seen where our our market our market position is, and, and where we can you know excel in areas. So we've got the rail the rail side this year. We've got CP7 that's starting, which is the next construction phase for network rail that starts in April. Um, so we've taken an active approach on that and got our teams working, knocking on the doors of the tier ones and the big clients, um, ready for those contracts and awards in April. So we re really are strategically looking towards that field and the electric charging points. Um, we've got we've got an EV side. We started two years ago working, doing the civil infrastructure uh, yeah. for a client of ours on the rail. Um, and that's grown over time to where we now offer a full turnkey solution, doing the electrical as well as the, um, the civil infrastructure. So it's a, again, it's sort of a one-stop shop, less risk for the clients. Um, we've built up our accreditations for electrical highways and highway electrical as well, so our, you know, our company structure, our accreditations and memberships have grown as a business. You know, we, we really are picking up speed in those areas and looking to to actually know those going forward. Okay, so in terms of challenges moving forward, um, you can often put business challenges in one of three buckets, if you like. Um, it's either time, are you working on the right time, are the right things at the right time inside the business. Is it about the team? Is it about growth, retaining, training, getting the right people on board in the right seats? Or is it about the, the money that's being generated in the business, simple revenue, either cash out, cash in? So time, team or money, which are the, which, what areas are, are you find challenging at the moment? I would say all three. 
And I, you know, I don't think you're ever going to get a case where you're not always working on all three of those. Yeah. Um, the guys we get in, like I said, we've got a minimum standard of qualification that we like our guys to have. So they're dual coded. So they have highway street works tickets. They'll have a PTS for the rail works. Um, they have their supervisor tickets depending on their role. Um, so if they haven't got those, then we get them those very early on. Make sure they're fully equipped for the business going forward. So they might be working on a rail job Monday to Tuesday and on the weekend be civils or vice versa. So the dual coded to, to allow us to adapt to that market very quickly and change. Um, the team we've got now in the office that we've built over the last four years, I would say, is in a position now where we can, we're probably top heavy at this point, but we're ready for growth. So we've, we've built that position now, got it in place ready. That's a strategic move we've had to ensure we're ready to hit the next phase of the markets that are changing. Yeah. Um, and then we can we can deliver a lot more work with the team we've got going forward. Um, and then again, the, the financial constraints are always, you know, are we going to be able to fund this growth and these work packages if they come in? Um, so our cash flow is key. So we've got a commercial manager on board. We've got a financial director that comes in once a month. Um, we sit down, have a monthly management meeting, understand where we're going, what our growth position is, and then make sure we've got the overheads and the cash flow forecasted to, to make sure we have no sticky wickets along the way. Good. Good to do very, very good financial planning, particularly if you're in a growth phase. So that's that's it. That's interesting. Right across the board, I guess there, there are challenges for many businesses. That I mean, the construction industry in general, um, do you think that's got some challenges at the moment? So I think there is a bit of a, a downturn. I, I've got a lot of building friends and colleagues that, you know, I see downturn in work, obviously with the interest rates, people aren't buying houses, et cetera. Um, during COVID in the last three years, there's been a massive upturn in, you know, in people doing, um, you know, stay at home and expanding their current dwellings. So there's been a lot of extensions, a lot of upbuild, which just seems to be dying down now. So there's sort of a bit of a dip in the market, um, which, are, which will change. Um, and then obviously there'll be a boom again in, in buying and adapting again. So I think in civil's world and, and in the rail world, because there's, as we come to April, obviously it's a new year, new contracts right now. People are holding on to their budgets to April. Um, and then once the new contracts and get extended in the new financial year, then it, it booms again. So I think it's going to be sort of another couple of months of a bit of a quiet spell. Mm. Um, but then I think it will pick up very quickly. Excellent. OK, so does that mean that you guys are going to be on track for your growth goals? At the minute, yes. We, we knew that there'd be a downturn. Um, but... Well, luckily for us at the minute, we've not been impacted by it. Um, as I said, we try to cover three main areas of the rail, civils, highways. And between the three, we've had quite a lot of work. So we've tried to build our company so we can suffer those dips. One, one will pick up when one drops. Um, so we're multifaceted to ensure that we've got a steady climb all the way. Yeah, excellent. OK, so steady, consistent growth has been the, the thing for you pretty much from the beginning. And you're right. And, and that's the way you're going to continue. Yes. Excellent. OK, so what's the biggest lessons that you've learned over the last four years? Really, I mean, the biggest lessons we've had, one is contractual. Um, we, we came unstuck at one point due to contractual negotiations with a client. Um, they weren't put in place early enough. Um, and we undertook works on the back of a letter of intent, uh, which came down to an awkward position where we had to stop. But under the contract, if we stopped, we were liable for charges. Um, but there wasn't a contract in place, but yet the letter of intent held, held contractual value. So um, that was a, a very nasty situation, which nearly brought us to our knees because the financial position and them not paying killed our cash flow. Um, which is very, very hard for us and a nasty lesson to learn. One, we managed to survive. Um, we sought legal advice. We've now got a, an expert legal advisor from that process. So, again, lessons learned, friend made. They now undertake all our contractual negotiations before we start. They read through. They make sure we're protected. Yeah. Um, so that was a very harsh lesson that we learned early doors. Um, and, again, cash flow from that, you know, understanding your cash flow in advance, knowing when you're going to grow, when you're looking to increase, when the projects pick up. People don't understand the amount of, of money in advance you have to lay out for materials, um, depending on the contractual position of your when you're going to get paid, if it's 90 days, 60 days, um, and then your guides. Obviously, our guides are paid weekly, 
yeah. in arrears, but yet we're still paying three to four weeks before we're paid ourselves. Yes. So very much understanding your commercial side and making sure the funds are there to fund. Yeah. Just just work alone, let alone any growth. Yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. So looking back over the years, have you got anything that you do differently, even before you started the business? Have you, have you got any advice for anybody starting their own business? So uh, it's, it's a very hard one. Um, it's a question that I see all the time. And, you know, being in business now, I would never change not working for myself. Um, and people say, you know, why didn't you do it sooner? Why haven't you done it earlier? For me, it's been a very natural position as I've grown throughout my career. Um, if I would have liked to have said I would have liked to have done it 10 years ago, um, I think I would have made a jump for my first company a few years earlier and accelerated my jump. Um, but I think the pathway I took gave me the knowledge and experience I needed over time to have that confidence. Um, I'm very much based, I'm, I'm a risk taker based on very diligent homework by myself. I like to know what I'm jumping into. Many people just make the jump. And they make it work, which is similar to what we did. I mean, you have to make that jump. And when you do, you have to make it work regardless. Um, but, yeah, I think I may have told myself to know my own worth earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Good good tip. It, that's uh, I think that's a lot of people who, who start their own business. Um, you know, some people jump early, don't do the research. Things can come unstuck in that way. But it sounds like you've done the, done the right thing. You've done your research first. So if you've got a, a, like a business person or, or someone from industry or business that you look up to that you you kind of you either like to emulate or you've you've read up on them and you think uh, they're quite an inspiring figure. Is there anybody is there any kind of business icon out there that that uh, that you look up to? Really, um, I try to structure myself on my old boss originally who, who would never say no to anything. Um, you know, just get the work in and, and figure out how to do it once you've got it, <laughs> um, which is very reactive and, and can be daunting, which we, we tried that approach to start with um, and then and then got rid of that quite early on. Um, <laughs> but no, I think my journey has been self-taught. Um, I don't like to stop and look around at other people. I did at the beginning. In year one, I was looking at other companies and thinking, oh, why, how are they doing that? Why are they excelling? What are they doing well? And then when you're stopping, looking at other people, you're just watching them go by. You know, I was very much blinkered, look at where I'm going, focus on my goals, and then, then what's out the window is, is irrelevant. Yeah. Comparison is a thief of joy. I've heard yes. that expression before. It's quite a wonderful expression, expression, and it's very true. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't use comparison. That's really good, actually. That's really good. You should always be on your own journey. I mean, that's... That's what running a business is about. It's your personal journey, your business journey. So if you've you're got not any, looking at your goals, you're not going yeah, to they're your goals, right? They're not someone yeah. else's goals. They're your goals. Why would you copy someone else to do your thing? It's crazy. So, okay. So what's um what's what's next? What's uh got any plans in the pipeline? Have you got any things you'd like to share? Um, so like I said, we um we we started Port CV two years ago, which is it was going strength to strength. We're now picking up a number of electric charging point um, contractors and um, installers. So we, we, that business is growing quite nicely and it's been at a steady pace. And then the next evolution of that is we've got into uh, solar, solar panel installs. So we're trying to build more of a renewable sector. Yeah. Um, so we've got EV, we've got solar paneling, and in the next year or so, we'll be looking to go into ground source heat pumps as well, because uh, yeah. that is drilling, and which is associated with the piling of the foundation. So that they all go hand in hand with what we do already. Um, so we're really going to be looking to, to push our renewables market as we go forward. Excellent. Big big growth market there. The solar side, are you, is it more commercial? Is it more domestic? Uh, so to start with, it will be more domestic market. So looking at yeah households um, to help them increase their... Yeah, you know, give it their bills. Um, yeah. yeah, and then we'll look to take it into commercial. Commercial is a big jump to start from, so we'd like to get our game, understand what we're doing, deliver that on a you know on a regular basis, and once we're confident in what we're doing and, and that's going well, then we'll look to increase the bigger markets. Perfect, perfect. Sounds like sounds like a good plan. I hope so. Approach, which is which has been your approach from the beginning, by the sounds of it. 
<laughs> yes learn the market yeah. and then do it right that's you know do it properly that's the that's the right thing so listen thanks so much for your time today it's been great to hear about your journey the last the last four years it sounds like you're you're going places you're doing it well you're doing it properly you're doing it in a considered way and it sounds like that's the right thing to do for you so that's absolutely fantastic thanks so much for your time today i really appreciate it no thank you Richard. i think you for having it's been great thank you Thanks. Cheers. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.